I think so many people are keyboard activists, right? Everybody's good at sending a tweet about how the world should be and nobody's doing anything about it and that just that is just very much human nature. We've gotten soft as a culture. Yes. You know, I mean, of course we've gotten soft as a culture in the US uh, because the US has had an incredible 200 year run, right? Like this is just what happens. You know, so as a culture, you know, I can't speak for, you know, people that live in the Amazon River and I can't speak for, you know, people that still live in Belarus, but the, the American uh, culture is soft and that's a great thing. That means there's been enormous amounts of prosperity, but let's not be naive. I mean, people literally complain when somebody gives them the wrong amount of like extra cream in a Starbucks $6 coffee. My lack of interest in complaining is so high uh, and when I watch what people complain about, it, it breaks my heart because they completely lack perspective. And I, I genuinely believe my happiness and optimism comes from my perspective. I, even in political unrest times like right now, a lot of people are very bent out of shape, but the reality is is that it's just never been better to be a human being. It's, that's just the truth, that's just data, that's, that's reality. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just a very fun time to be alive. And I think the way people look at the world right now, because it's such an incredible time, is actually the quickest tell to who they are. If you think it sucks or it's bad, you have losing pessimistic DNA. And if you think it's awesome and phenomenal, you have optimistic winning DNA. And I believe that to be true. And so, that's where we're at. We're beating ourselves up. Like, everybody sucks at something. Right, like we all have shortcomings and we all have strengths. And for me, it's like, why don't we just audit that? Like, why don't we just look at it that way and be like, all right, well, I'm good at this, but I'm not good at that. Like, and then, and then, and then I only focus what I'm good at, right? Like, I don't dwell that I can't fix shit around the house. I call somebody to fix it. Like, I'm not like, I'm not a man. I don't give a fuck. Like, you know, like, like, you know, like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, we all, like, I also think it's awesome that I'm so emotionally stable and I'm the emotional backbone of everybody. Is that what a dude's supposed to do? Like, like these cliches, these stereotypes, they're so silly. I'm fully in love with myself. But I'm also fully in love with everybody else too, right? It's not like, like it goes both ways. Like, I tell people to buy into me, that work for me, it's because I buy into them first. Like. I don't need anybody to gain trust with me. I, it's there. Like I believe that the human race is so grossly underrated. We are good. Of course we have some bad. There's fucking seven billion of us. But like when you look at our net score, it's bonkers shit. Like do you know how much damage we could be doing to each other on an hourly basis and we don't? Like we're still here. Like we won, we're the alpha being and we've figured out how to stay together. This is insane when you think about it. And yet everybody wants to dwell on like somebody said something mean. If you wanna be an anomaly, you have to act like one. Like people want all these special things to happen but then they're acting like everybody else. And that gets into the Saturdays on in your 20s like or, or just like taking risks or things of that nature like if there's anything they take away, it's like, look, like you're gonna only be so pretty, you're only gonna be so smart, like, you, like th there's, there's things that are gonna be natural and then there's things that you can actually control. I do believe, and I don't know if I'm right or wrong, I don't, but I do believe that work ethic is a taught behavior. It's something you do have more control over. And you know what really sealed the deal for me? Getting healthier. I was 38 years old and it didn't come natural to me. Like it didn't come natural to me at all. I hate the gym, I hate it now. I hate it, I don't like it, I don't wanna do it. Um, but, I, but I knew it was important. And somewhere around midway through being 38 years old, I got serious, I figured out my system, I made the financial commitment, and I've won, right? And I'll never lose again because the system was I needed to be accountable to another human being. 
So it was about Mike and now Jordan and whoever else is my trainer. I'm doing it almost weirdly more to not let them down. I feel like there's a shift that can make people work harder. The big one that I push is you're gonna die. Like, like if you're complain, like to me, life is broken down into complaining and not. So if you're not complaining, well then I have no, I have no advice for you. I'm, I'm pumped. Like you did it. Like, like I have friends who make forty-two thousand dollars a year, um, work nine to four, kind of, with an hour and a half lunch and forty-five minutes of YouTube and ten minutes of bullshitting and an hour of complete waste of time in a meeting. So they're kind of working like six, you know, hours a week, right? But they're pumped, and 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 they text me. These are high school friends, and they'll text me like how happy they are to be the coach of their kids' baseball team. And you know, like that's amazing. Like that that seems very obvious to me. Like that's like that's right. You know what's super weird? I'm actually weirdly envious. You know, like I it sounds cool. Like in theory, right? Grass is always greener, right? Like far less pressure. You know, like like all that time with my kids, oof, that would be cool. Like, there's just like all these things that I can justify. So to me, but I have friends who have $100 million in the bank because of Facebook's IPO, who complain, who are still hungry, who want to do even more, who will complain to me, because they know I work a lot, about no work-life balance, and they don't get to spend enough time with their family, and I'm like, you have $100 million. Like, you could stay home. Like, you're in control. Like. You don't complain about it. You've made that choice. Don't bullshit me. Like you want to spend more time with your family? Spend more time with your family. I'm trying to be very careful about what I'm saying versus what I'm doing right. because that's how you get exposed. And I don't mean like people calling you out and being like you suck. I mean to yourself. I don't want to be exposed by myself. It's 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 looking yourself in the mirror and saying like am I doing this right? So to me there's so many people that are talking shit about how big of an entrepreneur they're gonna be and how much they're gonna achieve and they don't work on weekends. You know, I worked every Saturday of my 20s. Like, and I talk to 20 year old entrepreneurs every single day. Lately I've been saying to them, this Saturday you're gonna have more time off than I've had in my entire 20s on a Saturday. So like before you tell me how you're gonna be bigger than me, start thinking about what you're actually doing. I'm careful to not give advice that I know is uniquely something that I was gifted with. Like, I, how do I tell you that, oh, here's how it actually works, and it almost started happening, it didn't happen. Like, I actually get goosebumps. Like, actually, like real heavy goosebumps when I hear something that I know feels right. What's the advice there? Hey, Johnny, start getting goosebumps. Like, I can't, there's certain things that I can't talk about because I know they're not practical. They're intuitive to me. I plan to instill kindness into my kids. I plan on instilling perspective into my kids. I plan in instilling just being a good human being. I, I plan on making sure they don't use their parents' wealth and micro fame and leverage to impose on any other person. I'm petrified of that. If my kids try to punk their friends on my shit, I'm gonna beat the fuck out of them. Like that's just loser DNA. You didn't do that. Right, like so like, I'm not obsessed with tactics. I'm obsessed with religion. So I have a lot of wealthy friends at this point who think it's smart for them to sit first class but the kids in coach, it's a tactic. They send their kids to Africa to build a school for a week. It's a tactic. It's like my friends that love the environment. The number two sector in the world that is hurting the environment is the fashion industry. When you run the math of what's doing bad to the earth, it's the number two industry behind gas, I I, I don't even want to say it because I'm not sure if it's gas and oil. The number two industry, this I know for a fact, is the fashion industry. So all my fancy friends who love the environment, are they willing to give up their fucking Louis bags? Let's see, right? So like I think people talk shit. So you let them sit coach and you went first class but you went to you know, Hawaii and ate at all the best, pl- like you can't pick and choose. To me it's binary. So I don't wanna be a hypocrite. So my big thing is like look, you need to be kind. Like mean mean is just non-negotiable in our family, right? 
And then you just need to not be full of shit. If you wanna look at daddy's mountain, and you wanna say what I did to my dad's, and that was a big mountain for an immigrant, like wow, dad did it, right? right. If you wanna say, I'm gonna climb that, and I'm gonna climb bigger, awesome. Like, I'm pumped, I'm weirdly not cheering for you, because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just a weirdly competitive dude. This is actually something I'm not proud of. I, I'm comfortable saying this, and I believe this is a flaw, but I don't want my kids to beat me, I don't. Like I don't, I, I hate saying it. I know this is where I get in trouble. People will take one little clip from one video interview and they're like, you're bad. I, it's just my truth. I don't wanna bullshit you guys. Like, I'm that competitive. I just want them to be all in on them, right? Like, I don't need them to be an entrepreneur. I don't need them to make me proud. They don't need to go to Harvard. They don't need to do shit. They need to be themselves, all in, and they need to be kind, and I'm good. Like, everybody thinks their stuff is so good. Like, every day, Gary, my Instagram's so on fire, it's so awesome. Why is nobody, like, why am I not gaining followers? Because it's not awesome. think, we all think our stuff is the best and like I get that but yeah that would be my advice only because that also is liberating. To me everything's about breathing, right? Like to me everything is about like take full ownership for everything and then everything gets easy because then you're in control and then learn how to love to lose. I think that's how, that's how entrepreneurship, that's how life is, we all have losses. And so I like losses, I love adversity, I like the climb, I like the chip on my shoulder, I like when people are like, oh I knew it, he's not that good. That is like, like I'm even weirdly scared as I continue to ascend and I'm getting popular and what, I, what do you say, the marketing leading, like if people start putting these words in front of my name, I'm like, am I gonna sabotage myself to like recorrect this? Like I like adversity. So yeah, all on me. You know, I enjoy losses. Now all of a sudden, like what? You become completely invincible. I feel invincible. I really genuinely, outside of the health of myself and 20 people, feel 100% invincible as a person. I know what my intent is. I want to do good at nobody else's expense. I'm far from perfect. We all are. And so it's just easy. It feels very light to live life. I'm just in a good mood. home and I think modern day parents and most parents do not do that. I think they focus on dumb shit like grades uh, because they are insecure and they want to put the bumper sticker that their kid went to you know, Stanford. Like it's real fucked up when you really think about what's actually happening. Um, so much of it is misery loves company or people reflecting of what's inside of them. the impact that you want to have on the world. Same thing that attracts so many of millions of people to people that are selling bullshit, those same people are attracted to me. And what I want to do is suffocate out all those other people and become the alpha of that entire world of people that are, are hoping and are desperate to look at me and what I want to do is inspire two 14 year old girls in Kansas City right now to build a billion dollar company on having a bunch of employees hugging each other in the halls. I think that Steve Jobs came along, became an icon, but the sad part of that narrative was he did not treat his employees well. He became an icon and the narrative became he got the most out of people by being a jerk and that became romanticized and a lot of people in Silicon Valley today run companies where they're mean because they think that's the right thing to do because they put Steve Jobs on a pedestal. I want my pedestal moment, I want to become that big and what I want to come from that is that kids that aren't even born today think that they can build a five billion dollar company and be a great guy or a great gal. I want to build the biggest building in town ever by just building the biggest building in town while I think most people try to tear down everybody else's building. So I think positivity and good is practical advice to building an empire and I want to be the poster child of the person that built the biggest, baddest empire and did it by being a good dude along the way. And not everybody's gonna be happy about everything I did, 
but if it's 97% of people talking good behind your back, that's a real legacy. And I wanna do it in a pop culture way. I'm gonna do it anyway. People have done that before. Just so you know, there's plenty of people. Warren Buffett's a really good dude. Like there's plenty of people that have done that. There's a difference. I wanna do it and I wanna be a rock star, right? Like, and that's where you influence people. Like, you know, like I wanna do it, but I also wanna be the most popular. And so then that person's like, oh, I wanna be him. So I guess I'll be nice. Like I wanna literally take people who have DNA that's kind of nice and make them more nice because they think that's how I became big. So I basically wanna trick the business world into becoming kinder.